and Happy New Year. I'm Pastor Jim Peters, and you're joining us for Sunday worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church in Topeka, Kansas, for Sunday, January the 3rd, the second Sunday of Christmas. And I hope that you've been having a good celebration in this holiday season and that you have experienced many of God's blessings. Unfortunately, I have to announce to you that COVID-19 has struck again. And though I believe everyone is okay, what that means is that there's not going to be any piano or organ at this service. And though I know that you join me in missing our musicians and our talented choir, I am not alone as I was the last time that, that this happened. Uh, but, and you will see who else is here with me uh, shortly, I believe. But for now, we are privileged to be able to come together once again to rejoice in the good news that Christmas brings, that the light of the world has come to us, and that he continues to shine in our lives, even now. We'll begin our service with the call to worship. It is still Christmas. Joy is still loose in the world. Love is lodged in hearts. And peace is still our fervent hope. It's still Christmas. Though the presents are all unwrapped, the batteries have run down, and family members have returned home. It's still Christmas. For God begins anew, giving us a baby to care for and calling us to live with tender compassion, gentle care, and overflowing love. Please join in singing our gathering hymn, Away in a Manger. And if you're using a hymnal, it is hymn number 277. Away in a manger, no crib for his bed. The little Lord Jesus laid down his sweet head. The stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay. The little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love you, Lord Jesus, look down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in your tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with you there. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Please join in our canticle of praise, verse 1 of Angels We Have Heard on High. Uh, it is number 289 in the hymnal. 
Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for today's children's sermon, so good morning, girls and boys. I have up here with me a little bag, a Christmas bag, as you can see, and uh, though I'm not going to pull out everything that's in here, I want you to know that this bag is full of candy, and all different kinds of candy. There's peppermint patties and Starburst, and there is a Reese's peanut butter tree. Uh, there are some Dove chocolate, some Smarties, some Starburst. Uh, anyway, a lot of different kinds of candy. And if you were here, I would invite you to come and take a piece from this can, from this bag. And I'm sure that there is something in this bag that you would like and that would be your favorite kind of candy. Now, I want you to imagine for a moment that we were going to take a whole bunch of kids, you and any other family members that you have, all the kids from church, maybe all the kids from your class at school, and we're going to put all of you in a bag and that we would offer for God to, the chance to choose uh, whatever one he would like. Now, do you think God would pick through the bag and say things like, I don't like blue-eyed ones, or I don't want that one. He's got dirt behind his ears. Or... Now, there's one with a great big smile. I think I'll take that one. Do you think God would do that? Why not? Well, here's what I think would happen. I think God would look in that bag of kids and smile and say, I love them all. Because that's what God is like. Now, you might think that there is somebody else who is smarter than you, or nicer than you, or better looking, or more popular than you. And lots of people think that way. But God doesn't. God doesn't play favorites. God loves all of us equally. God loves us even when we aren't the most fantastic kids in the world. I want you to try to remember that. And although I know things are very different for us right now, if you can, in the week or weeks to come, I want you to try to be a friend to somebody that maybe you wouldn't normally pick to be your friend. Will you at least try to do that if you can? Remember, 
that God loves that person just as much as he loves you. And remember, too, that God loves you. Okay? Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for all the things that you have given us. Our family, our friends, our homes, and everything that makes life good for us. We ask you to continue to look to you for everything that is good, and we ask you to help us to treat others with compassion and love and kindness. And we ask for all of these things in the name of your Son, Jesus our Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor. Together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water, in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the, of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather them and will keep them as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come again and sing aloud on the heights of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd, their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give them the priests their full the priests their foil of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The psalm will be read responsibly. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, who has strengthened, strengthened the bars, the bars of, your of your gates and has blessed your children within you. God has established peace on your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. God sends out a command to the earth, a word that runs very swiftly. God gives snow like wool, scattering frost like ashes. God scatters hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against God's cold? The Lord sends forth the word and melts them. The wind blows and the water flow. God, God declares, declares the, the word to Jacob, Jacob statutes and judgments to Israel. The Lord has not done so to any other nations. They do not know God's judgments. Alleluia. The second reading is from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, 
He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. We all, with all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our gospel acclamation. Verse 3 of Angels We Have Heard on High, number 289 in the hymnal. Come to Bethlehem and see Him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. From the Holy Gospel, according to the first chapter of St. John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, He gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. 
It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The day after Christmas, we received a sure sign of hope in the mail. And here it is. Seed catalogs. All of a sudden, straight from our mailbox, came all of these colorful pictures of pretty flowers and deliciously inviting fruits and vegetables. And of course, it really is a sign of hope because these catalogs seem to say that winter isn't going to last forever. Even though we've had a pretty mild winter so far, we've had some cold days. The trees have lost all their leaves and their branches are bare. The grass is brown and most everything looks dead or at least sleeping. But these catalogs seem to promise that a season full of color is already on its way. But before that can happen, there are certain conditions that have to be fulfilled. Any of the seeds that I might order from one of these catalogs would come with certain requirements in order for them to grow. They need good soil, They need plenty of water. And perhaps most importantly, they need light. Without the light and the warmth that the sun provides, nothing in this catalog would grow. The flowers would never bloom. The trees and the vines would never have a chance to bear fruit. Instead, everything would remain brown and dead. And it's the same with us. We all need light too. And we're lucky because in Kansas, we have lots of sunny days. But if we were to suddenly be deprived of that light for very long, we would probably find that it was starting to have an effect on us we would become more irritable, more gloomy, more depressed. We would become more tired, more lethargic. We would be different people from what we are now. Some time ago, I remember reading an article about life in a small fishing village in the northern part of Alaska. At this time of the year, the sun provides hardly any light at all for them, and they'll have to wait at least a couple more months before they can start to see blue skies again. And the always present darkness is hard on these people. They say that it gets to them, and that there doesn't seem to be anything that they can do about it. But they have all benefited from something that's called light therapy. A light therapy session involves going into a little room all by yourself. And in this room, you sit in a chair underneath a special lamp, and you just relax and read or listen to music. And after several sessions like this, you find that it starts to help chase the darkness and the depression away. And you start to feel like your old self again. That may sound kind of weird, but I think it goes to show what a difference light can make in our lives. 
We need light too if we're going to grow and thrive and reach our full potential. And God understands that need. And that's why that it's now, in the midst of this winter, that we are celebrating God's gift of light. But the light that we celebrate is not the one that we read by or that helps us make our way down a darkened staircase. And it's not the light that gives us a tan or requires us to wear sunglasses. It's not even the natural light that glows from our fireplaces or from the candles on our altar. God knows that we need all these kinds of light. But even more than those, we need the light of his Son. John reminds us of that in our gospel reading for this morning. He reminds us that when Jesus was born, light came into our world. A light to cast away the shadows and the gloom caused by sin and despair and hopelessness a light to shine within people and fill them up with the life of God, a light that would transform us and make us children of God. This is the light that we celebrate this season, the light of Jesus, God's own Son. But this season is almost over. The twelfth day of Christmas is drawing near. And after that, the epiphany. And that means that Christmas really will be over for another year. And so, as we approach the finish line today, we are brought back once more for one final look inside that manger we take one last look at the baby who was born to be our Savior. Look at him, John invites us. This is the Word made flesh who has come to live among us. But John is not being nostalgic here. He's not just looking back with fondness that at something that happened years ago and saying, wasn't that a special time? Remember when? And we can know that because he goes on to say something very curious. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. Grace upon grace. That means that God's power to save and to heal and to make new life spring forth cannot be limited to a certain place or time. Yes, the light was born in that stable in Bethlehem centuries upon centuries ago, but that was not the only time that it shone. God's light is not just past, it's also present and future. The light of Christ continues to shine, continuously, extravagantly, and without limit. And we have all felt that light. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here this morning. And we all need that light perhaps now more than ever. Because there's so much darkness in our world right now. It's hard to see what's coming next. It's hard to see how or when things are going to get better. And that's why it's so tempting for us to try to retreat into the past, to wish with all of our hearts that We were living in a time when things were easier, when life was simpler. 
But John doesn't let us do that. Although the beginning of his gospel takes us back before the creation of the universe, what he writes about has meaning for us right now. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We need that light. We need it to help us grow straight and strong, to help us flower and bear fruit. We need it to help us look beyond the things that depress us and bring us down and to bring us back to life again. And we need it to bring us to our true selves, the selves God wants us to be. In these 12 days of Christmas, there are no pipers piping or drummers drumming or geese a-laying. There is only the gift of light, the gift of Jesus. But that's the gift that gives us grace upon grace, the gift that keeps on giving. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to join with me in singing our hymn of the day, Go Tell It on the Mountain, in the hymnal, hymn number 290. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night. Behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. The shepherds feared and trembled when low above the earth rang out the angel chorus that hailed our Savior's birth. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lonely manger, the humble Christ was born. And God sent us salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Please join with me as we profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, 
True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in God's gift of gentle grace, let us pray for the church, the world, and all on whom the light of Christ shines. Holy God, bless your church throughout the world with your light in these times when we are limited in our gatherings. God of glory, hear our prayer. Protecting God, bless the whole world in 2021. Give us hope for the days ahead and grant us all good health and harmony. God of glory, hear our prayer. Saving God, we pray for the people of Nashville as they continue to recover from the effects of the explosion on Christmas Day. Give them your peace and comfort. God of glory, hear our prayer. Mighty God, give your help to children around the world, especially for those subject to abuse, hunger, and abandonment. We pray for loving homes and stable education for them all. God of glory, hear our prayer. Healing God, come to all in need in these times. Guide us through this pandemic. Make whole all who are sick with COVID-19 and everyone else for whom we pray this day, both out loud and in the silence of our hearts. God of glory, hear our prayer. Hear our prayers, gracious God, and bathe us always in the light of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. As I always do at this time, I would, once, I would once again like to thank you for your offerings to our church. Your goodness and your faithfulness are really being felt here, and I thank you so much for that. And remember, if you'd like to make an offering today, you can do so online through our church's website. You can also mail your offering into the church or drop it by the church during regular business hours. And once again, I thank you so much.
absolutely beautiful. Now will you please join me in our offering prayer. God of time and eternity, you, you have, have given, given your, your only son, son born, born of Mary, Mary to save and redeem us. Bless, Bless us with all good things, things that the, the work, work of our hands through all the years of our lives may proclaim the news of your redeeming love. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I have a few announcements to share with you uh, before we finish. Uh, well, first of all, I want to invite you uh, right after this service, uh, this morning, on Sunday morning, uh, Gary Teske is beginning a new class. Uh, he will be looking at uh, the new social message from the ELCA, Government and Civic Engagement in the United States, Discipleship in a Democracy. Uh, it should make for some interesting discussions. Now, this is a class on Zoom, uh, like we have been doing. The link to that Zoom meeting is not in the bulletin this morning, but it was in the midweek that came out on Thursday. So hopefully you got that, and uh, please tune in uh, for some interesting conversation with Gary. Uh, also, I want to invite you this coming Wednesday, which is January the 6th, the Epiphany, uh, to our own live-streamed Epiphany worship service. Uh, it'll be at 6 p.m., and it will be available on our YouTube channel, which you can access through our church's website. So please join me this coming Wednesday. On behalf of Vicki and myself, I would like to thank all of you for uh, the generous Christmas gift that you provided for us. We really appreciate it. And finally, well, I told you at the beginning that I was not alone here like uh, I was the last time. Uh, obviously, Javier is here, and I thank him for being here. And you saw Barb, who did the readings, and Nicholas, of course, but uh, Patrice and Juliana are here, too. So it's as if I've had my own Von Trapp family here with me for worship this morning. And I would like to thank them all for being here. And now, the Von Trapp children would like to wish you good night. Come on, you know, uh, so long, farewell. No? Okay. <laughs> At any rate, I want to wish you a happy new year. And uh, if you have the bulletin, you might notice that I have a blessing for this new year, which I would like to pray right now. May there always be stars to guide you and a smooth road for you to travel. May you know a thousand blessings each day. 
May God give you hope each morning and peace at each evening's rest. May God walk beside you now and always. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Be with all of us in the new year and always. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our sending hymn, Christ Be Our Light, hymn number 715 in the hymnal. And please note that we are singing verses 1, 2, and 5. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Longing for peace, our world is troubled. Longing for hope, many despair. Your word alone has power to save us. Make us your living voice. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church, gather today. Many the gifts, many the people, many the hearts that yearn to belong. Let us be servants to one another, signs of your kingdom come. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Shine in your church, gather today. Go in the peace of God's gift of love. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.